Welcome to the Rise and Above podcast. My name is David Hess, and today I have Stacy with me, and she's all the way from Australia. And it's currently, I believe, midnight there, right? Yes, that's right, David. It is midnight here. Wow, that's crazy. It's nine o'clock in the morning here. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it great that we can actually talk to each other, but be in two totally different time zones and morning and evening all at the same time? It is. It is insane. The power of the internet is crazy. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It is. So you uh, are from Australia, right? What What part of Australia are you from? Uh, I live in Brisbane, Queensland. Okay. Uh, I don't know where that's at. Okay, well, Queensland is a state, and okay. Brisbane is the capital of Queensland. Okay. Yeah. What What's the weather like there right now? At the moment, hot. Hot. Bright, sunny, and hot. <laughs> yes. Um, how hot is it? Uh, we're right at the end of summer, and we're just going into autumn. Wow. So the 1st of March, which is about six or oh, seven days ago, that was the 1st of autumn. So we've just finished summer and autumn, well, for some reason, it's still got some summer temperatures and summer weather, but that's okay. It'll cool down a bit soon. That's crazy because we're in completely different seasons right now too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're exactly. In we're in winter and it's, it's actually not that cold here, um, you know, for Michigan, but starting to warm up a little bit ah, there you go opposite ends of the world yeah it's crazy that is insane um so you you messaged me because you wanted to get the word out about possibly starting a, a group home yeah i've got this idea to call um to start a place to call home and what I wanted to do was I wanted to start this for all of the kids who have left the foster care system. So they've turned 18 and they've been asked to leave their foster care home from their foster care families. And they literally have nowhere to go. There's no support. There's no guidance. And most of them, like I don't know what the statistics are over in America, but here in Australia, there are 71% homelessness and 47% unemployment once they leave the foster care system. Wow. And that's big numbers. That's right. Huge. So currently in Australia, there's 47,619 children in foster care. Wow. And that's, and America, there's 426,000 kids in foster care. So it's a bit of a difference. But mm -hmm. every 12 months, approximately 600 of these kids, they turn 18 and they're asked to leave the home. They've got nowhere to go. They've got no life skills. And they're not ready to leave the home. They're not ready to go and live by themselves at the age of 18, right? And the real estate agents won't rent to them because they've never – They've got no rental history and no proof of, um, you know, that they can look after a place. And the government housing, there's an eight-year waiting list just for wow. government housing here. And so they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Where do they go? They're couch surfing. They're homeless. They're living on the streets. And out of that 600 that turn 18, 71%, which is 426 of these kids, are homeless. That's crazy. And that's massive numbers. It shouldn't be like that. There's no system in place to help these kids whatsoever. Because I know like here in, in America, I mean, every state's different. But, um, you know, some states have uh, programs set up for kids who, you know, turn 18. They don't necessarily have to move out right away. They have till like they're 21 um, or they they fund for them to go to college so that they can get some sort of training or life skills so that they can, you know, have, have a, a career. Australia doesn't have anything like that. Uh, no, once they turn 18, what happens is the government stops paying the foster care family a, um, a foster care allowance and the foster care family turn to their foster care child and say, well, we're very sorry, but, you know, we don't get any more money from the government. There's no more support. And we actually can't afford to keep you. You actually have to leave. And they, they have to go. 
they can't go back to their biological family. They can't go and um, so they're on their own, literally. They're on their own. Why can't they go back to their biological family? For whatever reason, they can't go back. Is it For a... whatever reason, they left in the first place. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Um, that is quite the numbers. You've obviously done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have. I have. Yes. So what is your... What is your background in foster care? Why do you have such a passion for it? Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, my background is that I kept coming across all of these kids who had left the foster care system. Uh, so I was uh, working in different jobs. I was um, teaching parenting skills and I was an author in some books and I'd be reaching out to all these different people and I was listening to their stories and they kept telling me, you know, I grew up in foster care. I said, okay, well, tell me about that. You know, some of the kids have had amazing, amazing lives. They've had really great foster homes, you know, very loving, caring, supportive foster care parents. And I take my hat off to them because that's brilliant. But then we've also had some um, kids grow up in the foster care system that haven't had such a really good experience either. So I've met both sides of the story and I've heard all everybody's stories, basically. And <clears throat> when I was listening to their stories, I could actually feel their pain because I could feel that they didn't have anywhere to go. They were on their own. Um, some of them got involved in churches, which became very supportive for them and they became Christian or um, some other religious denomination and they have had that support there but they're still having to figure life out by themselves they're still having to figure out what it is to be an adult they're still having to figure out how to budget money and everything else without any parental or adult guidance where's that coming from because they didn't get it when they were growing up. It, it's crazy to me that the government doesn't put something in place for these foster, these foster homes to help these kids before they turn 18. I don't know. Um, I haven't been able to find something that is there for them to transition into different homes and things like that. And so whether it is out there and I haven't found it yet, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So let's not, you know, put a, a blanket answer on that. But for what I've, from the research I've done, I haven't found anything. And what I wanted to do is a place to call home. I wanted to set that up for those kids. Um, so they come in and it's a program that they're a part of. They get accommodation, uh, reduced rent for, for accommodation. They get three meals a day, seven days a week. There's employment opportunities for them as well. And there's also study and apprenticeship opportunities. And I wanted to give them life skills. So different skills such as uh, doing their right to passage and learning how to be an adult and doing that transition from being a child into an adult, which is a really important transition that they need to undertake. And communication skills, I also wanted them to do that. Learn about nutrition and then Everything else is totally up to them, whatever they want to learn. So if they want to be a doctor, if they want to be a teacher, if they want to be a plumber or a tradie, uh, we can help them get into different apprenticeships and get them onto the path that they want to be on. And there'll be full support for them along that way as well. So basically helping to reduce unemployment, helping to reduce homelessness amongst these kids, which is really important. Mm -hmm. This is very important. So... That's what I want to do, a place to call home. I think that's an incredible idea. Uh, so how would you do that? Would you work directly with like colleges or like trade schools? What would, how would that work? Uh, uh, absolutely. So we'd work with the uh, Apprenticeships Australia 
and TAFE colleges here and different universities. So if they want to do a particular course of study, they go and enroll. But the place to call home is more of a community centre. So they've got a place to come to every day. They've got meals that they can eat every day and they've got the support that they need so that they can come and go as they need to, um, you know, during their work or their study and things. But they've always got a place to come home to. They've got a place to call home because I believe that every child deserves a place to call home. I agree. Um, so how many kids are you looking to help at a time? I mean, <clears throat> how big how, how big are you expecting your home to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, the place to call home is going to be a community center, and then we're going to have different blocks of units available, so different housing and accommodation available that won't be uh, on the same block of land. It will be okay. sort of you know, walking distance or you know within a 10, sort of 15-minute drive of the community center so that they can come and go as they need to, but it's nice and close for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll help as many as we can. So if we've got the accommodation available, we've got the spare rooms available, by all means, um, absolutely come on in. Um, we can put you on a waiting list. The community centre will be there 24-7 and any amount of kids can come into the community centre because that's the important part. So, yeah. Okay. And so in order to accomplish this, you're, you're, you're asking for an angel investor, right? Well, um, a bit, yes, let's just say yes at this point in time. If there is somebody out there who can actually see the vision, I've got a business plan that I have put together that shows revenue and income streams coming in. Uh, because I've just started the business side of things, the revenue has only just started and it's only small. But as it grows, then I'll be able to pay the angel investor back over time. But they can actually see the progression of how everything's going to work. Because I put like a little timeline together, a little um, mud map and they can go okay so there that's how it's all going to work yeah so this is something you've already kind of started yes okay yes. so what have you started already uh i put all the programs together so the eight-year program for life skills and training and helping these kids to transition into becoming adults i put all of that together Plus, I've put all the business programs together. So I have actually been talking to different business businesses and it was a marketing program. So it was done for you marketing. So any business out there who struggles with their marketing, doesn't understand marketing, doesn't like marketing, <laughs> thinks marketing is like, oh, my God, that's just too hard for my head. You know, <laughs> I just want to do what I love doing in my business and wish somebody else would do the marketing for me. I've got a full done for you marketing program. Okay. It's very affordable and it works across all different industries. So they're the sorts of things I've put together at the moment because I was focusing on bringing that revenue in so that we could actually build the place to call home. Okay. Yeah. So you're kind of asking for an angel investor. Um, <clears throat> what's your time frame on this? When are you wanting to, to fully jump into this? As soon as possible. Um, yeah. When I reached out to you, Dave, I'm just going to be totally honest. When I reached out to you, David, uh, I had found an old school for sale and it had all the school buildings. It had a massive hall that we could turn into a dining room and a kitchen. It had a cricket pitch, an open field, a basketball court and a massive open shed right? Mm -hmm. And I went, oh my gosh, this is our property. This is our community center. It's come a little bit earlier than what I expected. Maybe there's an angel investor out there. Okay. I went and put an offer in on this property and I spoke with the owner and the owner has actually sold it to uh, somebody else. Oh. So I actually don't have it. And that's only just happened in the last 48 hours. Wow. Okay. So and I got the phone call on Friday afternoon at about three o'clock and the guy said to me, yeah, look, you know, the other guy, he's come good on his contract and they're going to go to settlement. And I went, okay, well, there's not a lot I can do. Right. So, um, so when I originally reached out to you so I could do this interview, yes, you know, I was put the offer in and I thought we had it. Um, but just on Friday, which is two days ago, it's, gone 
So I have to now look for another block of land and another site that will be suitable. Wow. So how much land are you looking for? Uh, I want it big enough that we can actually have an open field and a cricket pitch, um, What's that a- we can have some classrooms, that we can have a big massive work shed that has like woodworking and metalworking tools and things and that the kids can get very, very creative and enough space to do gardens and things as well. So um, that particular block of land was 30,000 square metres and yeah. I think that was pretty big. You know, that was pretty good. So a couple of acres, 30,000 square metres, four acres of five acres of land, that would be enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I think what you are doing and wanting to accomplish is absolutely incredible because there's so many kids. I mean, even here in the United States that I, I see it all the time on like Facebook, them complaining about how they age out and then they're just kind of left, you know, to figure life out for themselves. And oftentimes, oftentimes, kids in that situation, they, they end up kind of going down the wrong path, they hang out with the wrong kid or the wrong, you know, adults, and then it leads them into trouble. And whereas if they had somewhere like a community center, like what you're talking about, you know, that might help them it might help guide them, you know, if you give kids a sense of purpose and belonging, something bigger than themselves to be a part of that they'll get involved in that. They will become, for me, um, it was all about having them feel like they belong somewhere, you know, that they're a part of something, Mm -hmm. that they have a purpose in our life because they do. Every single one of them has a purpose. we just got to find out what they're skilled at. And they do belong. They belong here at a place to call home because that's for them. That's their home. When they don't have a home, this will be their home, you know. Um, I see the stories all the time. I've been reading some of the newspapers that over in the UK, they're wanting to extend the foster care payment to the age of 21 because they said at the age of 18, the kids were too young and they weren't ready to leave the home. They needed a few more years. So over in the UK, they are looking at extending that foster care payment. Um, here in Australia, they haven't done that yet. So I want to put in place those alternatives. I want to put in place all of those options, life options. Give these kids a chance to succeed. If you give a child a chance to succeed, they will succeed. Most generally. Uh, my concern about, you know, like, it's, it's, I think it's a good thing if they extend it to 21. But my concern is that there's nothing really being done while they're you know, below the age of 18, they're in these foster homes. Why isn't there programs in place to, to help them, you know, kind of transition to be an adult once they're 18? I couldn't answer that question, (laughs) David, because I'm not the government. But I mean, I I don't, I don't work there. Um, But like, I agree with you. I, I really honestly agree with you. I think there should be a lot more programs in place for these kids. Um, And, but I look at it from the point of view, I go, well, what do we have? We don't have enough information. We don't have enough programs or skills. Let's create something. Let's put something together and make it work for them, you know, um, because I look at it. If these children were actually living with their biological parents, their mum and dad, their mum and dad would have done everything they could for them. They would have gone out of their way to help them, keep them at home, give them food and board, you know, 50 bucks a week until they're ready, help them complete their courses of study and everything, you know. I've been finding that most of the kids who do live at home with their mum and dad are leaving home at between the ages of 24 and 26, maybe even 28, right? They've they've finished high school, they go on to uni or TAFE, they get some work, they do a bit of travel, they come back. Mum and dad's home is always there for them. And then, you know, once they turn 24 to 28, then they're sort of like getting girlfriends, boyfriends, getting Mm -hmm. married, finding a place of their own. So what I wanted to do was set that up for all these kids in the foster care system and create as much of a home environment as we possibly can for them. You know, be there for them as much as we can in the same way that a 
a biological family would. So, yeah. Uh, is there any way that the government could help fund this thing? <clears throat> um, I don't know, to be honest with you. I really don't know. Uh, I wanted to keep it private funding um, okay. for... <sighs> Once the government... Yeah, I really wanted to stay with private investors and private angels um, if possible. Uh, or, you know, fund it myself if I need to. Mm -hmm. Like, if I've just got to keep going and sell more marketing courses, then that's what I will do. And I'll just fund it myself. I, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, like I said, I think what you're doing is absolutely incredible. I mean, it's it's quite a passion to take on. I mean, because it's not for you, it's for others. And, yeah. And so I think that's amazing. Is there anything else you want to talk about, about this project? Um, we've, we've pretty much covered everything. We, we've covered the different programs and the different skills that they're going to be learning and what's going to be offering for them. We've covered the block of land and everything. So, uh, yeah, you've done a really great job. You've, you've asked all the questions, David. <laughs> well, thanks. It's been really good. So, yes. Well, it's been yeah. awesome talking to you. I've, I've never talked to anybody from Australia and I, I was telling my wife that I had somebody coming on from Australia and she's like, wow, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> it's just, again, the power of the, the internet is just, it's, it's incredible. Facebook. Facebook is where I met David just in the foster care kids group. Yep. So yeah, there you go. So it does work. It does. Yeah. It and does hopefully, work. hopefully a lot of people will see this and possibly something will come of it. So Let's put it out there. Let's see what happens. All right. Sounds good. Well, That'd thank you. Awesome. Thank you for coming on, Stacy, And I really appreciate it. And this episode will be available first thing tomorrow morning. So, Thank you, David, so, so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right, bye.